he was going to make what we call dressing balls, or you guys call it stuffing. And she didn't just have it in a bowl. She made it into these ba these balls, and oh, they were so good. I can smell them right now. But the thing was, in our family, the adults ate first. And I was always afraid that the adults were going to eat all the stuffing balls. And I was, oh, I would just, I would stand like behind the table and watch them. And they would go for another one. I'd think, oh no, there's not going to be any more. Then when the kids came to the table, my nanny would go to the oven. She'd bring out a pan. Still hot. And just for us. So I, oh, I can remember those days. And then I'd go to my mama's house and, and we'd go there and we'd have lots of gifts and toys. But the thing I remember most about her is I was going to leave there with a huge bag of candy. Although it's been People used to call it worm food. Many say, you kids got worms. You got to feed them worms. And, but my grandma would give me just the biggest bag of candy. And I knew, oh my goodness, it is going to be so good. Just enjoying Christmas. What I want y'all to do is I want you to think back. For you, it's not Christmas until what? Do you imagine that there's a blank at the end of that? For It's not Christmas until. And I want you to turn to somebody next to you and I want you to tell them what that is. Tell them what, what the thing is that it's got to happen for it to be so Christmas I'll for you. You go ahead and tell somebody right now. A simple phrase. Two kids from one to ninety two. Although it's been said many times, many ways, Merry Christmas. All right, so let, let me ask you how many of you had to go back to your childhood? Yeah. Went back to your childhood, okay? Or how many of you, maybe it's a food? Or, or a song or, or something that you do. If you have that warm, fuzzy feeling right now, that's called nostalgia. The definition for nostalgia is wishful desire to return in thought or in fact to a former time in one's life, to one's home or homeland, or to one's family and friends. And I love this last part. A sentimental yearning for the happiness of a former place or time. You know what I'm talking about? where you just yearn to go back to the way things were at another time in your life. Did you know God's nostalgic? No, I'm serious. God is nostalgic because God wants things back to the way they were. Now, if you were here last week, I told you about how they were, but in case you weren't, listen, God spoke and when he spoke, things began to be created just by his words. He spoke and there was light. He spoke and there was a sun and moon and stars. He spoke and there was land and water. He spoke and there were flowers and trees and vegetation. He spoke and there were animals of different sizes and textures. He spoke and man and woman were created. And he created this garden. And this garden was perfect in that he placed Adam and Eve in the garden and he said, listen, you just enjoy. You can eat from the trees anything you want in here. Don't eat from the one in the middle. But everything else you can eat. And listen, I'm going to come by in the cool of the day and we'll just have a conversation and talk and we'll just share together because that's the relationship that I want to have with people. And so God created this perfect place on this perfect planet so that He could enjoy a perfect relationship with the crown jewel of His creation people. And we don't know how long Adam and Eve got to enjoy that, but there came a point where they didn't listen to what God said. They didn't listen when God said, don't eat from that tree. Everything else is okay, but not that tree. And selfishly, they took the fruit and they ate it. And when they did, they introduced sin into the world. And that perfect relationship that they were enjoying with God was broken. And never again would they be able to just fellowship with Him in the cool of the day in the garden. In fact, they were kicked out of the garden and not allowed to live there anymore. See, sin was introduced into the world 
through Adam and Eve. And because of that, even to today, our relationships with God are broken. But God is nostalgic. He wants things the way that they were. And so John says in John chapter 1 and verse 14, the Word became flesh and made His dwelling with us. Jesus stepped out of perfection. He stepped out of heaven. He stepped out of being God into human existence as a baby. He became a person with skin and flesh and blood flowing through his veins. And he did that also that you and I could have our relationship with God restored. So we could have that relationship again that was lost in the garden. And God did that because he loved us and because he wanted to have that relationship with us. Jesus became a human being. John called him the Word. The Word became flesh. He looked like us. Jesus wanted to know what it was like to be a human being, to know our thoughts and our desires, the good and the bad. And so he stepped into our world and became us. I traveled for Roanoke Bible College when I was in college on a recruitment team. And we would go all over the East Coast and we would try to recruit students to come to our college. I was in a band with three guys and, and we, we just had a great time during the, uh, the summer together. And uh, one of the camps that we went to was part Park Springs Camp, which is just south of Danville. And you would go and you would stay for the entire week. Well, I think about Thursday of that week, they told us that they had set up a mud pit. Okay, and all a mud pit is is a big hole full of water and mud. And I mean, it was that sticky, nasty, just, uh, it was good mud. And they said, we're going to play games this afternoon, and, and, and we're, gonna, we're just going to use the mud pit. So there were all kinds of tug of war, and the losers, you know, they fell into the mud. Ha, 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 it's real funny. It's all muddy. Well, the four of us decided we're just going to we're just gonna go for it. We're like, we're going to wrestle. We're going to fight. We're going to throw mud. We are just going to have a blast if we're going to be in this mud pit. And so we jumped in, and we began to fight. We began to wrestle, and we were covered from head to toe in mud. I, it was so bad. We, had, we didn't wash our clothes. We threw them away. That's how bad it was. But I did not realize the change that that mud made in us until toward the end of the afternoon, a girl